I don't want to let her go, because truth be told, if I let her go, that's it for me. I'll never find someone like her. It wouldn't be fair for me to compare every future woman I date to her, but I know that that's exactly what will happen. I want to call her so badly and work things out, but I know she won't answer. And so now, on my 20th birthday, a day that's meant to be filled with celebration, my day has instead been filled with pain and suffering. That was an excerpt of a journal entry that I made on my 20th birthday, March 14th, 2020. It's also going to be in my book, Soul Shock, which is coming out January 11th, 2022. And if you're watching this video, you could probably use that book. So be on the lookout for that. If you're watching this video, the chances are you're going through something. It could be a breakup, could be a heartbreak, whatever it may be, I've been through it. Okay, I've experienced it. Let that journal entry be proof that I have experienced devastation. I know what that pain feels like when that special someone that you saw yourself spending potentially the rest of your life with suddenly disappears and you're left stranded with yourself, your pain, your trauma. I've been there. I know that heartbreak has a way of making you feel alone, but you're never truly alone if you love yourself. I'm going to repeat that for those of you who didn't hear me. You're never alone if you love yourself. Okay, and that's what heartbreak has taught me over the past year and a half is that I have to develop a relationship with myself in order to avoid putting myself back into that space where I'm vulnerable to that type of pain again. Now, I'm not saying that you should just avoid pain for the rest of your life. Okay, that's trauma in its own right. That's you repressing your pain. But you shouldn't put your happiness in the hands of somebody else. Your happiness is your responsibility and your responsibility only. Because you're you. Only you can love yourself unconditionally. Nobody else knows you the way that you know yourself. Okay, and that is the first thing that you need to realize about heartbreak or breakups or any type of pain associated with romance. Is that self-love is the foundation. A lot of us found ourselves in these situations because we didn't love ourselves. You accept the love that you think you deserve. Okay, so if somebody treated you maybe less than ideally, if they didn't treat you with the respect that you would have liked, that means that you didn't love yourself enough to walk away from that situation. Or maybe you did. Maybe you did build up the courage to walk away from a situation that you knew no longer served you and that's why you're here. Because that still hurts as well. But at the same time, it's very, very important to understand the power of self-love. A lot of times we see red flags and people show us their true colors from the get-go, but we ignore them, okay? We become colorblind because we don't love ourselves and we just want companionship, even if it comes at the expense of our relationship with ourselves. But the irony of that is that when you don't love yourself, you can't accept nor give love to somebody else. Okay, I've been in positions where I've tried to force people into situations that they weren't ready for and that I clearly wasn't ready for either, but I didn't see that because I was so lost in my loneliness. I thought that somebody else could fill the void that I had within my soul, within my heart. And what I realized is that maybe they could temporarily, but nobody can bear the weight of your struggles and their own forever. And at some point or another, everyone is going to choose themselves. And they have every right to do that. I'm saying all of this to say that the first thing that you need to do in order to get over heartbreak, get over a breakup or an ex or anything of that nature, is to forgive. You have to be willing to forgive yourself and them. Now I know that may be difficult. Maybe they abused you, maybe they cheated on you. Okay, maybe they created damage that you believe cannot be repaired. I promise you it can be. And you watching this video is the first step in that process. But you have to be willing to forgive them. Not for them, okay, not for them, your forgiveness really doesn't mean anything to them in the grand scheme of things. They may think it does, but realistically, it doesn't. What really matters is if you forgive yourself and if they forgive themselves. You see, when you're looking for the forgiveness of somebody else, what that really means is that you're looking for permission to forgive yourself. That's why it's very important to forgive yourself now. Because even if somebody else forgives you, 
if you don't forgive yourself, you won't be receptive to their forgiveness. You won't be receptive to their positivity and their love. Okay, so you have to forgive yourself and through forgiving yourself, you'll be able to forgive them. Because like I said, even if they did you dirty, we accept the love that we think we deserve. So if you were in that situation, like it or not, you did it to yourself. I'm not saying that it's your fault. I'm not saying that it's your fault. But what I am saying is that there is accountability to be had on both sides. You can't control if they take accountability or not. All you can do is control whether or not you take accountability for your own life and for your actions, for your decisions, for your relationship with yourself. And the way to do that is by understanding that everybody does the best that they can with the information and resources that they have available to them. So for example, if somebody cheated on you, that simply means that they did not have the capacity at that point in their lives to be loyal. They just didn't have it in them. If they did, they wouldn't have cheated. It's as simple as that. We all do the best that we can with the information and the resources that we have at our disposal. And you can sit here and reflect on the situation and play the would have, could have, should have game. It won't get you anywhere. You'll run yourself in circles. Believe me, I know. I've spent many times just laying there wondering what I could have done differently, why things had to end the way that they did, why she didn't want to talk to me, why she wasn't answering my texts. I've been there. Okay, I've been there wondering if she was ever going to hit me up. Guess what? She didn't. Okay, she didn't. And I'm glad she didn't because it forced me to develop that relationship with myself. I had to transcend my codependency and develop that love within myself. Now, I understand that this process is much easier said than done. Okay, forgiveness, especially forgiveness of self, because a lot of times it requires you to dig deep into your shadows. You have to go down the rabbit hole of your own subconscious mind and figure out what trauma caused you to accept the broken love that that person tried to give you, the broken love that that person had the capacity to give you. Because like I said, everyone does the best that they can with what they have. Okay, so if they were only able to give you half of the love that you feel like you deserved, why were you only willing to accept that? Okay, ask yourself, why was I only willing to accept that? not why were they only willing to give that. And a great way to find the root of your trauma is to do therapy. And that brings me to BetterHelp, the sponsor of today's video. Now you're watching this video because you're going through heartbreak, which I believe to be probably the greatest pain that you could ever experience in your life. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist with whom you can start communicating within 48 hours. It's not a crisis line, it's not self-help, it's professional counseling done securely online. There's a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's 15,000 plus counselor network, a lot of which may not be locally available in many areas. This service is available for clients worldwide. You can log in at any time and send a message to your counselor, and you'll receive a timely and thoughtful response. In addition to that, you can also schedule a weekly video or phone call with your counselor, so you'll never have to worry about waiting in an uncomfortable waiting room like you would in traditional therapy settings. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change counselors whenever needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling, and financial aid is available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. So go to betterhelp.com slash Jordan Green. That's better slash Jordan Green. And join the over 1 million people, including myself, who are taking charge of their mental health by seeking professional counsel. Okay, do not undermine the value of having somebody who's there to listen to you and give you insightful advice. Very, very, very important on your journey. Do not try to overcome this alone. That's a big part of the reason why I make the videos that I make is because I believe that nobody should have to overcome that type of pain by themselves. I'm not even sure if it's possible if I'm being honest, because for me, I know that I've confided in making these videos because I know that I'm creating a community of people who feel misunderstood in their pain. Like I said, I understand you. I understand what it feels like to lay awake at night wondering why you weren't good enough. I've been there. I know what it's like to go on late night drives and cry the whole drive. I've been there. But you have to understand that that pain will not kill you. Okay, that pain will only strengthen your relationship with yourself. But you have to allow it to do that. You have to see beyond the way that you feel. And you have to understand why this had to happen to you. Now, 
a great way to express your forgiveness for yourself as well as for your ex or whoever it was that you're watching this video thinking about is to apologize to them. Now I know I might lose a few people with that one. Okay, if you feel like you're the victim in this situation, it may be very difficult for you to put your pride to the side and apologize to somebody who you feel did you dirty. I understand that, but you're not doing it for them. You're doing it for you and potentially them. Maybe you apologizing to them will wake them up and help them understand that they have work to do on themselves. Maybe you can be an example in their lives of how to take accountability and maybe their next partner will reap the rewards of that. You get to stop that cycle, but this is about you first and foremost. Okay, apologizing is very powerful because you are taking your power back. You are no longer the victim of your situation. You are in control of your situation. You are in control of your past, your present, and your future by apologizing. I've personally apologized in the past to women that I felt did me dirty, and it felt like a weight was lifted off of my shoulders. I felt more at peace than ever before because I took accountability. I realized that I can only control what I can control, which is me. And by taking responsibility, understanding where I went wrong, owning my mistakes, and apologizing for them, it allowed me to clear the guilt from my subconscious and begin to work on myself again. Instead of having these invasive, intrusive thoughts in the back of my mind, preventing me from finding love. These are the thoughts that will keep you in those same types of relationships over and over and over again. This is why a lot of people attract the same type of partner, that same toxic person with a different face. It's because they refuse to take accountability. When you identify with the victim mentality, the victim mentality will identify with you. It will latch onto you and it will make your life a living hell. Okay, so you have to be the bigger person and apologize. Okay, a lot of times you don't realize what people are going through. Like I said, we all do the best that we can with what we have. What I realized in hindsight is that in me trying to force people to love me in the way that I felt like I wanted to be loved, I was completely undermining the way that they felt. I was being selfish. At the time, I didn't realize that. I was being selfish. I was being toxic. I had to take responsibility for that. Does that excuse the way that they treated me? No, it doesn't. Okay, I've been treated down bad before. Ghosted, flaked on, all types of things. But I can't control that. What I can control is me. I can control my actions. I can control my thought patterns and my self-perception. You have to take responsibility for your own well-being, your own peace of mind. You can't put those things in the hands of other people because at a certain point, they won't be able to carry them anymore.